So I've had a fun, what, week since my last video and um, brilliant to begin with. I was dri driving the car, test drove it, drove really well, could feel it had extra power. Um, didn't push it too hard because I haven't got the right fuse in still, didn't have the right code in to see what amps I was pulling and I just want to do some proper testing. Uh, didn't have the bonnet on either or the bumper. So uh, yeah, just some gradual testing. And uh, when I brought the car back in, I was uploading the code. I just kind of need to turn the car on and off a few times. And when I was turning it on and off, I noted that my relays were making a different noise. They were not clicking, they were clunking. So I was like, that's a bit strange. I need to check that out. So check it out and find that both my relays are closed, stuck closed. They weren't opening and closing anymore, stuck closed. So for you guys who don't know so much about EVs and, and, uh, and the circuitry around them, but you have a thing called a pre-charge circuit. And there's two reasons why you have a pre-charge circuit. One is to stop your relays from getting uh, welded shut, and the other one is to protect the inverter. Um, reasons being is that the inverter's got some large capacitors in it, and those capacitors, when they're empty of energy, they are a short circuit. So when you connect those to the batteries and those high voltage relays click, you have a huge inrush of amps, only for a fraction of a second, but um, it's enough to damage the inverter and it's enough to cause a spark when these close and it actually welds these shut. Um, so you have a pre-charge circuit and the pre-charge circuit stops it happening. You only have to pre-charge for about half a second, second, it's not, not long. Um, so you flick that on, then you flick to the main circuit. Um, so gathered that my pre-charge circuit was dead um, and I uh, checked that because I took my pre-charge resistor out, which is this thing, and it should be measuring at 30 ohms, um, and it wasn't measuring at anything at all. So because I bought another pack, I had another resistor, which is here, and I took a reading from that, and you're going to laugh, because I didn't realise it to begin with. The reading I took was 9 mega ohms. Just keep that in mind for a minute. It didn't occur to me and about that number um, until later, but what I thought at the time was, oh, my resistor's broken because I'm getting no reading and I'm getting a reading out of this other one. So, bought some new relays, fitted them, um, swapped the pre-charge resistor over, still wouldn't pre-charge, put a voltmeter across the inverter. I actually put the delay of pre-charge to five seconds just to stop it from ever clicking into the high voltage. I had five seconds to check, not working, turn it off. Um, and uh, <laughs> it took me quite a while to check everything again, to go, all the wiring's working, everything is good, what the hell is going on, just to realise that the pre-charge resistor that I'd been sent was actually broken. I don't know if I can get that on the video. It's got a crack there, and I could actually probably pull the end of it off. It's, it's completely loose. Um, so how unlucky is that? And I know that was broken before I put it in the car because when I took my one out, I measured it. Then I measured that one. It was nine mega ohms. Didn't think anything of it. But obviously nine mega ohms. Well, that's just way too high. It should be about 30. Um, so I, I contacted the guy I bought it from and he's got no idea of the history of the car, but I'm going to be pretty certain that there's a Nissan Leaf that got scrapped somewhere because the pre-charge fuse died and probably I know the Nissan Leaf actually checks the pre-charge fuse and would have thrown a whole ton of errors um, and, uh, and then they probably scrapped the car. <laughs> so that whole story ends up with me and another broken <laughs> resistor. I mean that's pretty unlucky to be fair but at least I know that now. So you know I can't see anything wrong with what I've got. Um, I've tested everything to death. It just works. Um, other than the fact I'm obviously not monitoring this stuff, so when it did fail, I didn't know. Um, so I'm now waiting for another pre-charge resistor to arrive. I can put it in the car, and then we can do some testing. Um, the only other one thing to really note uh, since we've last spoke is I, I'm starting to get some concerns about my high voltage wiring. Um, somebody did contact me on comments and said, oh, I think your, your, your rating of your, your wiring is too low. Um, and I think it might be. <laughs> I think it's rated to about 125 amps, but that's continuous rating. Um, and the original Nissan Leaf can obviously pull much higher ampage than that one off. And it had a 225 amp fuse. I don't think it ever gets anywhere near that in general running. Um, 
So I'm just going to be mindful with all the new power that I've got that my cabling doesn't get hot. So on the testing that I do, because that's what's going to happen, the cabling will get hot. And then of course if you let it get too hot, it will melt, um, then your connectors fall off, and then it will eventually catch fire if it got hot enough. So in all the testing I'm doing, I'm going to be checking the amps that I'm pulling, checking the temperature of my cables, and just start to build up a confidence in that does my high voltage cabling need replacing. Um, it's a possibility. It's a very much a possibility. It's a day's work really. It's not the end of the world. It's expensive the cabling, but um, it might need doing. So that's where I'm at. I've now got um, back of the car here. So there's my new relays are in there. Oh, can't see, no light. Um, and I'm just missing the pre-charge resistor in there at the moment. So I've also got a bigger fuse on the way. Uh, it's actually a 300 amp from a 110 kilowatt car. Ow! And um, that should be good for now. I think I need a, probably a 400 amp one. But I can't, I, from all the evidence and all the logs I've seen, I've not seen an E plus pull 400 amps. Um, you're probably going to get lots of people say, yeah, it does. Uh, send me some logs so I can just have a look myself. Uh, I think that's it. I'm going on holiday tomorrow, so I'm away for a couple of weeks. So it's going to be quiet. Uh, it's a shame. I wanted to get this done before I went away. But uh, when I get back, I'll have the parts and uh, I can get it on the road and start doing some road tests, which I know I'm desperate for and a lot of you are as well because I get a lot of messages. So thank you very much for your concerns when I went quiet for a week as well after I got it working. Um, it's much appreciated. But uh, look, take care of yourselves and I'll catch up in a couple of weeks. Cheers.